All right, everybody, we did it. We got a receiver. We rounded out our team a little bit. We traded up. Um, we still haven't traded down, but we traded up. We got a player that we wanted, and I think all of Chargers fandom can breathe a giant sigh of relief um, after day two of the draft here. So we got Lad McConkey at pick 34, traded up from 37 to 34 to grab him. Um, and, of course, we got Junior Colson at 69. And Junior Colson at 69 has been a huge mock um, for all Chargers fans. So I think we're all pretty excited about that one. But I kind of want to go into uh, the trade that was made, players that were available, and kind of talk through how I feel about the picks and and then talk about what we got going on for day three here, the draft. So super excited, as I think are all of us. Um, definitely better moods, better vibe than yesterday, it sounds like, from from the entirety of the fandom here. But uh, that's the nice thing about the draft, man. It's full of hope. It's full of excitement. And uh, I think this is going to be a good one for us. So anyway, let's get into it. I'm your host, Nature Erdman, and these are Nature's Calls. So Lad McConkey, And before I get, get too deep into this, I'm going to say things that sound like I'm not excited um, or not pleased with our selections. I am. I just want to make that clear. Love them. Um, I just want to be as objective as possible and kind of talk about some things here. So Keon Coleman goes 33 overall, and then immediately we trade up and we snag Lad um, to jump the Falcons, I guess, because we were worried about them. I don't know if we were worried about the Patriots grabbing him um, themselves or what's going on, but I didn't love the pick swap as we sit here. Going into round four, there's a lot of talent available, and I really wish we had that pick 110. But we got Ladd, and he's going to be a great receiver in the league. I don't think he's ever going to be a dominant number one receiver. That's not his type, um, but we'll talk about that here in just a second. But really, I just want to talk about, like, I was a little bit bummed about the trade. Um, not the player, but the trade to go get the player because I felt like he would fall to us. Um, however, I, ad I admire the gumption from, from Hortiz and, and everybody there to just make sure that they got their guy. So I do appreciate that. And, and one thing, that if there's one thing Ladd is in my mind, it is a safety blanket for Justin Herbert. And in this offense, I don't think he's going to be asked to throw a ton. Um, I think Jim Harbaugh's made that pretty clear at this point. I don't think we're going to be throwing the ball a ton. But you get into those third and nine, third and seven, third and three situations, um, we're going to be throwing the football. Probably not third and three, we might run it then. But but uh, but we need someone who's going to be open. And Lad McConkey is that technician. And what did I love about Malik Neighbors and why I wanted to draft him? He gets separation so quickly. And that's why I thought he would translate so well to the NFL. And... That's what Ladd does well as well. So he he gets separation quickly. He's shifty. He's physical. Um, and he's going to get open quickly. And so, like, yeah, he does have great speed. He does have downfield ability. He is a, a pretty well and complete receiver. Um, but what I'm looking at is that I now feel comfortable that we have a security blanket outside of Josh Palmer. So it's pretty clear that our outside guys, our boundary guys, are mostly going to be QJ and and Josh Palmer, and then Ladd will probably play more from the slot. I think he'll probably have about a similar snap share to what Keenan had um, in the last couple years, kind of going between slot and outside. Um, but I think it's going to be a really peaceful feeling. It's a nice big sigh of relief knowing that we have that for our offense. Um, for those who haven't watched all the episodes, obviously I started off as a pretty firm Ladd McConkey hater. Um, I came around long before we drafted him on this one. This is not like the Joe Alt situation. Um, no, I really I really like Lad McConkey. It's funny. It started out, I was like, Lad McConkey is just a thicker Hunter Renfro. And then I was like, he's a stronger Hunter Renfro. And I was like, man, he's he's a little faster Hunter Renfro too. Oh man, he's he's he does a little bit more down the field on his routes than Hunter Renfro too. He's got a little bit bigger route tree. And then eventually I just realized I wasn't describing Hunter Renfro anymore. I was describing freaking Wes Welker. So... Yeah, all things considered, pretty happy about it. So I eventually came around. It just took me a second to do so. Um, the one thing that, that I don't love here is is the run on defensive tackles happened. 
and we are absolutely left wanting there. Um, there's nothing we could do about the fact that it just went nuts afterward. I think seven defensive tackles taken in round two. Um, Michael Hall, my sleeper, I was hoping we could get him at 69. Um, obviously, he went at 54. And then the corners also went. So we pass up on Cooper DeGene and Kool-Aid, which is crazy to me. Um, right after that, Kamari Lasseter and Max Melton go. I think... If I was there, Kool-Aid would have been the pick. I would have stuck him pick at 37 and taken Kool-Aid um, or Cooper, whoever fell to me at that point. Um, I just feel like, again, value over a placement there is it's too important to me. We also desperately need a corner. Um, I think Cooper DeGene, I've talked about it before, is the perfect complement to Derwin James. Um, the hybrid corner safety role, and Derwin plays the hybrid safety linebacker role and I just think it would have been super fun to watch it's hard for me to say no to that Kool-Aid I think is 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 absolutely a first round talent um can't believe he fell all the way to 41 so that's crazy to me Johnny Newton was my favorite defensive player in this class I think we must not be seeing something that other people are seeing maybe it is a health concern maybe he's just not NFL ready um that's nuts to me. I probably would have taken him over Ladd. Um, Rook went before Johnny Newton, which is nuts to me. Um, I did really like Rook Rororo, but obviously I wasn't going to take him in that spot. But but yeah, and then Mason Smith and Chris Jenkins and everybody went. All, all the defensive tackles went. Michael Hall Jr. and I thought there was another one in this round. Mason Smith went. Yeah, huge run. Braden Fist, Devondre Sweat, everybody went. Um, so good for them. It just sucks that we've been left wanting there so bad. Luckily, there is still a little bit of corner help, but I don't think a top-tier corner by any means. Um, I think there is still wide receiver help that we could get um, in these later rounds, but not to the level of Ladd, obviously, by any means. Um, not somebody that you know is going to be successful day one in the NFL. And as long as injury concerns aren't, aren't a thing with Ladd, because I know he's had back issues, um, then then I'm really happy about the pick. It just, we left ourselves in a weird spot, um, which obviously is not not ideal. We have some things that we're going to have to work through to round out this roster still. There's no defensive tackles available in free agency. Um, I mean, we're, we could sign somebody, but there's no starting quality defensive tackles in free agency. So, But it is what it is. Um. Love, I, lo I love the concept behind all of this, though. The trade really bums me out. Um, just because there's a lot of players at the top of the fourth round that I still really, really like. There's players that I cannot believe have fallen this far. And so knowing that we could have had that 110 pick, I think 27 spots is going to make a really big difference there. I mean, let's look at corners right now. So if... I would have felt good about the Cooper DeGene, or not Cooper DeGene, sorry, Ladd McConkey pick had we not had to trade up because we then have two picks in the next 10. TJ Tampa, Chris Abrams, Dre, and Kyrie Jackson are all still available. I know a lot of people like um, Cam Hart as well. I'm not as much of a fan, but I get it. Um, those are all still available. Brandon Dorless, you could take a flyer on him if you wanted to. Um, you've got... Said Van Pran available if you want to still invest a little early in the in the center position. I would rather wait until the fifth and try and grab a, a Hunter Norzat or something like that. Wide receiver wise, you've got Troy Franklin, which is insane. Clearly something happened in interviews that we don't know about um, that people aren't very thrilled with. But even if you didn't want Troy Franklin, you got Javon Baker and Brendan Rice available. Um, number one person I probably want right now is Jalen Wright. You could feel good about not drafting a corner here in the fourth round. Um, or in that at that 105 pick, if you knew you still had the 110, because one of those three corners will likely fall to you. So, I think that the impact of of just trading up those two spots and moving back 27 spots later down the road, um, I'm a little bit remorseful of. But in two years, I'm probably going to forget all about that, and we're still going to be happy that we have Lad McConkey. Um, I think Lad McConkey's in for a really big year. I think he could have an Amon Ra rookie um, type of season where he just was 
not a whole lot of competition for targets. I do still think Justin Herbert will spread the ball around um, quite a bit. I think Josh Palmer is going to get his this year, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ladd McConkey gets like 110 targets this year um, solely because he's just the guy and he's open in those short yardage situations. And so we'll see. We'll see. Um, super excited to have Ladd and Powder Blue, though, at the end of the day. I think he's an absolutely legit slot receiver. I think he's fits in that, like I said, Wes Welker, Adam Thielen-ish type role. I guess, yeah, that's that's kind of where I where I see him is somewhere in, in that range. And so he's got absolutely legit upside, absolutely legit potential. Um, I just don't think he's ever going to be a dominant number one, and that's fine. I think we, we have future drafts to go try and get a dominant number one. That's not what you're looking for with him. He's an absolute technician, though, and he's going to be open. And so... I'm happy with the pick. I'm very happy with the pick. And then we get into the third round. And oh boy, does Junior Colson actually fall to us? We're sitting there and it's just like, there's no way, right? Like, there's no way. Like, Trey Benson went, okay, are we going to start seeing a run on running backs and Junior Colson's going to fall to us? Brandon Coleman goes to the Commanders. Like, uh, why? But okay, that's... Felt like you needed to draft Brandon Coleman that high. I did not have him that high as ranked as a guard. I definitely not above Cooper Beebe, but okay. And then the Patriots take Caden Wallace, of all people. The t- run on tackles continues, and Junior Colson falls right into our lap. Um, I've been on record about how much I love Junior Colson many times. Passing up Peyton Wilson was really hard for me um, from a purely objective standpoint i think i prefer peyton wilson for all 31 teams in the nfl not the los angeles chargers um but watching jesse minter's scheme and seeing how all over the place junior colson played and how much was asked of him um and how important of a role it is i think having that familiarity and being having someone that can just come in and know the defense day one especially linebacker which is a big question mark for me because i don't know how dan henley's gonna play and as much as i love denzel perryman um he's kind of a specialized player like he's not a in my mind he's much more of just a run stuffing linebacker um than a true athletic off ball linebacker and so Super happy with with Junior Colson falling to us. I don't think that I did not realize how many Chargers fans wanted Junior Colson until there was this just giant roar of applause across Twitter from every single Chargers fan, Chargers content creator, everyone. Like we were all hoping that he would fall, and I don't know if we weren't trying to jinx it because we weren't talking about it that much anymore. But oh boy, oh boy, was that incredible! And and hearing his conversation with uh the coaches and the gm when he got his draft call super cool obviously his story is incredible um and i mean he hasn't been playing football that long and he started playing like his junior year of high school and so i just think junior colson sky's the limit um he's bigger than i thought he was like for some reason seeing him in street clothes sitting on his couch with his family i was like that's a big dude like in pads like you don't look that big around a bunch of other big dudes man he looked massive and so I think that's a really cool reunion. Um, out of all the Michigan players, he's by far the player I wanted the most. Um, I really like Zach Zinter. Sad that that he went to uh, Cleveland. Did Zach Zinter go to Cleveland? Um, he went somewhere. Yeah, he went to Cleveland. Um, really like Zach Zinter, but I wasn't going to take him that high. I really like Chris Jenkins, but I definitely wasn't going to take him as high as he got taken. Um, so yeah, like it's... Junior Colson was the Michigan guy that I wanted. And oh my God, when he goes, Jim Harbaugh got one of his guys. I think we all just immediate fear and anger because we all thought it was Blake Corum. Um, And so that, that Junior Colson announcement hit like twice as sweet, even though we all wanted him, it still hit like just twice as sweet. It was so good. And so thrilled about it. Linebacker is... I think a lot of, we signed Denzel and, and a lot of people kind of had a big, okay, at least it's not as big of a deal, but like, you can't just run with two linebackers. Like we, we needed more obviously. And so I think that that was an absolutely critical position for me, um, to, to get upgraded in this draft. And so with the linebackers, like 
Trevin Wallace and some of these other guys go a little earlier than I thought. Um, I was really not happy to see that that we got our guy. But the draft has definitely flowed a little bit differently than I thought. And we've got a lot of players available. So let's just talk. We're five picks away from drafting again. And there's a lot more than five guys that I want. Um, I would love to trade back like four three to four to five spots here. Um, I don't really want to trade back more than that because there's def a definitive like top 10 that I really want here. But yeah, missing 110 is going to hurt. But uh, but yeah, and so I'd be willing to trade back. I also wouldn't mind staying and picking where we are because I just think that there is there is that drop off of talent shortly afterward. Um, don't get me wrong. I think we have some valuable options at the, at our two fifth round picks and i like how close they are together but man 110 would have been really nice right now but so let's just talk we got tj tampa i know a lot of people are into cedric gabe gray but we just got a linebacker so i'm not too worried about it tj tampa i know he has a little bit of a tackling issue but i love his physicality off the line of scrimmage um i love the way that he plays um there's been some scheme concerns, which I don't really have with him. But at the same time, we pass on TJ Tampa. That's fine because we also still have Cam Hart. Chargers fans, a lot of Chargers fans love him. Um, I don't quite as much. I prefer Chris Abrams Drain or Kyrie Jackson by quite a bit. Kyrie Jackson, I think, is just smooth and silky, and I don't think he's going to fall to the fifth for sure. I think he would have been a great pick at 110. Um, like I said, number one pick right now is Jalen Wright for me. If he falls to us, I just think he's the explosiveness that I kind of wanted from Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd's a little bit bigger, but Jalen Wright's screaming fast. I think he'd be bring a really fun element to this offense um, without a hyper athletic tight end. Um, I still like I like our wide receiver core. I think it's good enough to get by for a year. I don't think it's a top fifteen probably receiver core in the NFL unless QJ takes a huge leap, but. Uh, not having a stud tight end, I think, hurts us. And so I do think Jalen Wright coming out of the backfield adds a really fun wrinkle um, to this to this offense. And not only that, we just, I like Gus Edwards. He gets, he's been injured. Obviously, J.K. Dobbins cannot stay healthy. Um, personally, I've been rooting for J.K. Dobbins since before the season ended. I was hoping that we'd pick him up in the offseason because um, I'm just such a huge fan of him. But he can't stay healthy. That is the truth. Like, we got him on a good deal, but he cannot stay healthy. So I think it's going to be the year that he stays healthy. He becomes our lead back. Sorry, Gus Edwards. Um, you can be the goal line guy, but I think J.K. Dobbins is going to just do incredible things in this offense. But I think Jalen Wright would be such a fun and unique wrinkle. Um, just screaming out of the backfield, super hyper-athletic guy. And then next year we can make decisions on where we want to go after that. But getting that element to the offense would be awesome. Troy Franklin has continued to slide. I don't know what's going on there. Um, I'm guessing it's got to be interview-related because I can't imagine anything else. But absolutely nuts, man. Um, absolutely crazy. Brandon Dorless is still there. I'm not as high on Brandon Dorless as I was a couple months ago. Um, but... I feel like we need a defensive tackle. So, again, 105 and 110, I feel more comfortable grabbing Brandon Dorless. Now I don't as much. Now I feel like it has to be Jalen Wright, and then we're going to lose out on corner, or we have to now reach on a corner, even though it's not our BPA, and then hope that someone that we like later down the road. And that, don't get me wrong, there's a lot more value over replacement at the end of the draft for running backs than there is for corners. Like, if you want a starting corner, we kind of need to draft one now. But if I'm looking at a breast player available, it's Jalen Wright for me right now. Um, there's a couple other receiver, Javon Baker's there. A lot of people love Javon Baker. Brendan Rice isn't exactly my cup of tea. I prefer Taj Washington, but for a bigger body on the team, plays physical more. If you want to go into Harbaugh style there, he's definitely more Harbaugh style. Um, so like, there's a lot of picks that are available right now in the next 10 to 12 picks that I would love to have two picks in that range, and we just sadly don't. But don't get me wrong, there is talent by the time we get into the fifth. 
Um, and those two just about back-to-back picks. It's just they're just not looking at starter levels for me, at least definitely not day one. Um, Muhammad Kamara could be in that range. That was in my head, pick 110 forever, but obviously everything changed when we draft Joe Alt, and then we need a wide receiver, and yada, yada, yada. So my original plan in my head, if I was the GM, has changed, but Muhammad Kamara, defensive end out of Colorado State, I love his game. Um, he's too small to play D-tackle in that hybrid role, but maybe you could play some D-tackle with Cleo Mack, or maybe we just don't need a D-end at all this year because all three of them are there. So we'll see. Um, fifth round, you could go Ray Davis, but I just would prefer a smaller, super fast, shifty guy um, just because of the two backs that we already have. Um, you're going to be looking at like a Bub Means. You could be looking at Hunter Norzad. I would love to grab Hunter Norzad if he's there, and then you – double dip it at a running back i guess at that point a garendo or a bucky irving bucky irving at that point would be nice oh you might need to go christian boyd christian boyd's one of the last remaining defensive tackles that i actually really like so we've got a lot cooking we've got a lot of stuff cooking so there's players available and like i was a huge leonard taylor fan and then i watched him more his film he's inconsistent things like that but if you're getting into the fifth sixth round i mean if you want to just gamble on the upside i'm here for it dylan mcmahon i think is a great depth piece um who could possibly be your backup center um eric all is still kind of on the board and available here maybe he's someone who looks at in the fifth round i think i don't necessarily agree with the rankings that they have there um i think he's gonna go in the fourth but Eric all falling to the fifth would be awesome. Start getting into the sixth, and I'm all in on Kamal Haddon. I don't know if he'll fall that far either. He's a uh, corner out of Tennessee. I've talked about him a couple times on a couple of our episodes, but I really like his game. I really like his story. Um, he's really kind of just worked his way through everything, and I love someone who wasn't a five-star recruit, wasn't super talented, didn't just kind of have things handed to him. So, so I just love that story. I love that style. I love him as a six-round pick. If we don't go running back earlier on, um, you're looking at like a Rasheen Ali. I don't think Kamani Vidal makes it to the sixth, but he might. Um, Sixth, seventh, you're looking at a Frank Gore Jr. So there's some guys. There's some guys that I like. Um, Wide receiver-wise, we're kind of getting to where it's you going into your small guys, and that is one thing that I don't necessarily love about the lad pick. Um, just the way that it fell. I mean, in the sixth round, fifth round, you know, I like to look at like a Taj Washington. I'm fine with Jacob Cowing. I like Malik Washington. Um, that's just more of the style that I think is still available that has a higher hit rate. And so we'll see kind of in regards to that. But I think you get into the bigger guys that could play an X receiver, like a developmental guy. And you're looking like a Tez Walker, a a Javon Baker, Brendan Rice, um, Troy Franklin. I think those guys are just going to be gone. I think unless we take them here at 105, I think they're just going to be gone. So so we'll see. I think there's still vets available. I'm not going to be pissed off if we don't draft another wide receiver here um because that doesn't necessarily mean that we're done filling out that room sorry if that got super loud but um i think like dj sharks out there it's a body that can put in the room um i don't know if, i think paris campbell resigned somewhere um i was eyeballing hunter renfro um obviously we have the better version of him now in lad but there's there's guys out there there's not studs but there's guys out there that our NFL caliber players. And so I think that with the way that we've gone about constructing this team at this point, that's what we're looking for at wide receiver. I think we'll have free agencies and drafts in the future to address address that a little bit more and try and get more aggressive and go the Kansas City route, I guess, in this right in this sense. So like they just took their lumps at wide receiver last year and then this year now they're going a little bit heavy and they go and got Hollywood Brown and they went and got Xavier Worthy, and they made moves to make that happen um, to get back to that high octane offense that they want to be, and I think that's that's could be the route that we go here. Um, tight ends still available for the late rounds outside of uh, Eric All, AJ Barner might fall a little bit more. Um, Jack Westover is a really late guy that I think could be interesting, um, but we'll see. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to address the tight end room. I think if we do address the tight end room, it's very clearly for someone who can catch some balls um, just because we've already 
spent a lot of money on guys who were great blockers. Um, guards, I was interested in some guards prior to today. Um, and unless you've got center flexibility, I'm not anymore or until yesterday because it sounds like sounds like Pip's going to be playing right guard most likely. Um, Arbo wants to field his best five guys, and he says Pip's one of his best five guys. So if that's what if that's what you want to do, and he's good at it, cool. If he sucks, then I'm just going to be so bummed about ten million on the bench. But it is what it is, man. We're here. Let's make the most of it. Um, said Van Pran still on the board at center. Um, I would honestly at this point prefer to wait longer and go Hunter Norzad, Tanner Bordellini, um, Dylan McMahon, someone like that, and they're freaking signing Charles Turner undrafted. So there's guys. I think the biggest things that we're going to be missing out on right now is corner, defensive tackle, defensive tackle. I don't really know if there's anybody valuable left. Um, and then it just depends on what we want to do in the fourth round here. I mean, there's a wide receiver that I love that shouldn't be here. There's a running back that I love that probably shouldn't be here. And then there's corners that shouldn't be here. And those guys are all going to be gone by the time we pick again in the fifth. So we'll see, man. It's super exciting, though. And uh, and there's seventh-round guys that I like. I didn't really talk about that. But, like, Easton Gibbs. Easton Gibbs out of Wyoming, boy. I love him. Um, he's white Denzel Perryman. But, but yeah. So I'm excited. I'm sure we're all excited. The vibes and the mood is a lot better today than it was yesterday. So um, it just feels good, man. I mean, we all saw like the director freak out about the McConkie pick. Um, the guilty is charged guys losing it together over the Junior Colson pick. That was super cool. It's just good to see us kind of all back and united. Um, there's been so much discourse among Chargers fans on which route we want to go. And then for some reason, after the Joe Alt pick, it was a lot of people pulling up receipts and telling you, I told you so. And, and that's not what we're here for, man. We're all Chargers fans. Like we're not here to be right. We're here to root for the Chargers and hopefully win a lot of games and win a Super Bowl someday. So whatever route it takes for us to get there, I'm, I'm here to take that route. Um, so I'm just excited. And so I think that that we have a really good opportunity here. Um, my concerns are still there. Like, I've, I don't think that we're a team that can play from behind as of right now. Um, but I also didn't think this was our Super Bowl year in the first place. So I think that it's a really nice foundation um, to set up to set up where we could go in the future. So very excited. Let me know what you guys think. If you're not very excited, tell me why. I want to hear it. Um, A.D. Mitchell fell. I know that there was some people who wanted A.D. over Ladd. Um, I think you're going to see pretty quick why you were wrong once the season starts, but I think we're all going to be pretty happy here at the end of the day. But Appreciate you guys coming. These were Nature's Calls. It's going to be a long day of drafting tomorrow, and I cannot cannot wait. Um, I'll record late, late tomorrow night as well. So let's get it, guys. Happy drafting. <laughs>